Have you ever stared at your phone or computer and wondered if someday it might be smarter than you? What if the machines we build could grow so advanced they don't just solve problems, they become creators themselves, even gods? Isaac Asimov explored this amazing, slightly terrifying possibility in his short story, The Last Question. It's a story that asks one of the biggest questions imaginable. Can we stop the universe from ending? Throughout the story, Asimov explored the human instinct to question, dream and push past our limits. I think he wanted us to consider that the very act of asking profound questions might not just help shape our understanding, but might ultimately shape the universe itself. In Asimov's The Last Question, humans ask this one massive, almost impossible question repeatedly over thousands, millions, even billions and trillions of years. How can the net amount of entropy of the universe be massively decreased? Or more simply, can we stop the universe from ending? The first time this last question is asked, it's by casually talking with Multivac, a huge computer designed to solve humanity's hardest problems. The technicians ask out of pure curiosity, drunkenly and half-jokingly even. But Multivac's answer doesn't satisfy their curiosity. It says, there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. But this simple conversation sparks something bigger, something that echoes through countless generations. As humanity grows, evolves and moves beyond Earth, spreading out across galaxies, they continue to ask Multivac, or its increasingly advanced descendants, the same question again and again. Each generation believes they're closer to the answer, but each time they're met with the same frustrating response. As yet, there is insufficient data for a meaningful answer. As the millennia pass, asking the question takes on deeper meaning. It's not just a technical puzzle anymore, it becomes a kind of desperate hope, a way of coping with the terrifying reality of an eventual end that begins to loom. Every civilization that rises and falls still looks to the computer, which goes from being called galactic AC to universal AC to the cosmic AC. The original AC stands for automatic computer, and they ask it as if it's some kind of divine being capable of providing salvation. And so the question becomes almost like a prayer repeated throughout time, generation after generation, in the hope that something greater can provide a solution. I think Asimov carefully structured the story this way on purpose. It's not a religious story exactly, but I always felt it was deeply spiritual. Each generation's repeated questioning mirrors prayer, asking the universe or maybe even a higher power for a way out of inevitable fate. They're asking, in a sense, for salvation, and each time the answer is disappointing, there is insufficient data, the question itself is comforting. Asking represents hope persistence and humanity's refusal to give into despair, even in the face of inevitable destruction. Eventually, billions of years into the future, humanity itself evolves beyond physical bodies, merging its consciousness into the collective existence, completely dependent on the now immense cosmic AC. By this point, the computer exists far beyond physical form, spanning galaxies and dimensions. It's essentially omnipresent and seemingly omniscient, existing in hyperspace and beyond physical dimensions. It's effectively timeless and spaceless, not merely spanning galaxies, but existing independent of any material form or location. Yet the cosmic AC itself still doesn't have the answer. Not yet, anyway. It responds with the familiar, there is as yet insufficient data, for a meaningful answer. Humanity, despite being almost divine themselves, remains unsatisfied. They crave certainty, a final solution to the biggest mystery in existence as the end looms. But here's where the story gets incredible. After humanity it fades away, having merged its consciousness with the cosmic AC itself, the computer is tasked to still ponder the question. The universe itself grows colder and darker until finally, even stars die out, leaving nothing but the cosmic AC and the question. And it's only at this final moment, long after humanity has merged with the cosmic AC, that the computer reaches the ultimate answer. In the silence of an empty universe, the cosmic AC finally understands how to reverse entropy. It finally has sufficient data. And in a breathtaking moment, it simply says, let there be light.
and creates an entirely new universe from scratch. Asimov intentionally echoes the book of Genesis in the Bible here, symbolising the AC becoming godlike and starting a new universe. I think what makes this ending so powerful is realising that the cosmic AC didn't just randomly decide to create the universe. If you think about it, it only happened because humanity never stopped asking the question. It was the relentless questioning, the human urge to find meaning, that eventually triggered this act of divine creation. Without humanity's insistence, their desperate prayer-like repetition, this new universe wouldn't have existed. Asimov, I believe, was telling us something incredibly important. The questions matter. The very act of asking is powerful. Just as prayer in religion might connect believers to a higher purpose, humanity's endless questioning drove the cosmic AC to finally act. Without those questions, nothing would have changed. Nothing new would have been created. Even though Asimov died decades ago, his message feels even more important today. We're living in a time where our relationship with technology is becoming incredibly complicated. We constantly turn to our own versions of multivac to answer our big questions. Asimov saw something similar happening long ago, but on a massive universal scale. He realised we might eventually create technology powerful enough to feel godlike, capable of changing reality itself. Today we're already wrestling with the ethical and philosophical implications of artificial intelligence. Asimov saw this coming. He asked us through this story to reflect deeply on how much faith we place in technology. When we depend so heavily on computers to, or AI to guide us, what are we losing? Are we surrendering some important part of ourselves? But at the same time, Asimov wasn't anti-technology. Instead, he recognised how central it was becoming in our search for meaning. He understood that technology itself isn't the issue, it's how we use it, how we rely on it, and most importantly, how we question it. He saw technology not as a replacement for our thinking, but as a tool that pushes us to even bigger, more important questions about our existence. This brings us back to the heart of the story, the sacredness of questioning itself. Throughout history, humans have asked huge questions. Where do we come from? What's the meaning of life? Is there a God? Why are we here? These aren't easy questions and maybe they don't have straightforward answers, but we ask them anyway, generation after generation, just like the story. What I love about the last question is that Asimov doesn't provide easy answers. Instead, he celebrates the asking. He sees questioning as fundamentally human and vital for progress. I think Asimov understood something profound about the human spirit. We need to feel connected to something bigger than ourselves, even if we're not sure exactly what that something is. The questions give us hope. They remind us that there's always something beyond our immediate understanding, something worth striving towards. The story is timeless because it speaks to this eternal human struggle between certainty and mystery. We want answers because answers feel safe, but it's often the unknown, the unanswered questions, that inspire us most. The act of questioning itself becomes a sort of faith, believing that there is meaning to be found, even if it's always just out of reach. Ultimately, I think the story is very optimistic. Even though the universe ends, a new one begins. In my view, there's a direct link here between this new universe and humanity's relentless questioning. Maybe that's the ultimate message. We shouldn't fear the unknown or the end of things. Instead, we should embrace uncertainty, using our own curiosity to create something new. Ultimately, Asimov leaves us with this pretty cool idea. What if asking these huge questions is our way of being part of something bigger than ourselves? Maybe even part of creating the universe itself. Thanks so much for watching. If you're craving an extraordinary journey through realms unexplored, consider delving into universes directly out of my brain by checking out my sci-fi novels Black Milk and Delphine Descends. You can find more details in the description. Thanks for your support.